Now, we're going to talk about the importance of knowledge. We continue in the book. We say, God has given us everything that we need to live the God kind of life as his church. But what stands between us and the life that God wants us to live is lack of knowledge. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 5 says, In fact, I've started verse 2. It says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who, who called us by glory and virtue, by which we've been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, okay, let's continue verse 5. But also, for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then it says, For he who lacks these things is, is short-sighted even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was perished from his old sins. Now, let's see. The Bible makes it clear that God has done everything that he has to do. But now we have to add, we have to increase our knowledge of the Lord so that we can walk in the fullness of what he has given to us. Let's see. We say the God kind of life is a life of having fellowship and communion with God, the life of sonship with God, a life of success and victory over the world and Satan, the life of being a joint heir with Jesus Christ in the kingdom of God, the life of glory and honor and living in the realm that Jesus gave us all together. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says, My people perish because of lack of knowledge. The thing that will make a believer walk in the position that Christ has bought for him with his blood is to know the word of God and put it to practice. The Lord Jesus says that people shall know the truth and the truth shall make them free. John 8.32 Now, this book is written so that you will get the knowledge that you need in order to walk in the position or the dimension which God wants you to walk in. Satan likes to take advantage of Christians who are lacking in knowledge. The truth is that Satan does not have power over even one Christian, not even one Christian. But because of lack of knowledge in Christians, he gets the chance to destroy them. Lack of knowledge in a Christian opens a door for Satan in a Christian's life. The Lord Jesus has finished his work of redeeming and reconciling people to God. But people can only accept and live in the position he has given to them only if they know his word. The Bible tells us that it is by only knowing the word of God that the righteous can enjoy their inheritance in Christ. So we're going to talk about... We're going to talk about a lot of things in this book that are going to give you knowledge of what God has given to you. Lack of knowledge is a killer. I've seen Christians going up and down seeking deliverance from demons just because they don't know that they have power over the devil. See, lack of knowledge will destroy you. People are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Seek knowledge of seek the, seek the knowledge of the word of God. Then you will you will enjoy this God kind of life. Life of of being a joint heir with Christ. That means all that belongs to the Father belongs to you. Knowledge is what will put you put you in that position where you can enjoy it. Now, let's look at the importance of meditating on the Word of God. We say the Word of God has the power to change a person and to enable him to walk in the position that God intends for him to walk in, which is a position of living like and doing things like God as his sons and daughters. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 says, Be imitators of God as his, as his dear children. So the Bible says we should imitate God because we have his nature already. We have the same nature that, that he has. So we can imitate him and get the same results. We say knowing and meditating in his word makes us walk in the full manifestation of his sons and daughters. Meditating in his word is different from reading the word. Reading is looking at the letters and understanding what is written there. But meditating in the word is making the word a part of your life. Meditation takes reading carefully, thinking over and over and speaking that which you have read with your mouth. It takes repeating over and over that which you read until it's part of your spirit. And when the truth of the word of God is part of your spirit, it is only then that that truth will be manifested in your physical life. The word of God will produce results in your life only when it's in your spirit, not only in your mind. Or your soul. The soul and the mind is one thing. We'll explain it in the teaching of the sons of God. And what makes the word become part of your spirit is regular meditation in it. And when it is in your spirit and you speak it with your mouth, 
then it will bring the changes and results that you expect. Let's look at the power of meditating in the Word of God. We say in the book, whatever you look at and meditate on, you'll end up resembling. This truth works in all, th in all things. Example, a person who always watches or listens to a vulgar music ends up speaking that language that he always listens to. Now, the Bible tells us that when you always meditate in the Word of God, you'll function like God. We already have the same nature as God in our spirits. But this nature can only be manifested in the physical realm if you meditate on the Word of God. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 15 says to meditate on the Word of God. And when you do that, our progress and success will be seen by all. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 tells us that if we meditate on the Word of God and say it with our mouths night and day, we will succeed in all that we do. 2 Corinthians 3 17 and 18 tells us that when you look at the Lord by meditating in His Word and spending time with Him, and spending time with Him in prayer, we change to be like Him in the outer man. That, that, that means in the physical man. In other words, this nature that is like the Lord's own nature is resident within our spirits and is manifested on the outside as we meditate on the Word of God. Another example is found in Genesis chapter 30 verse 25 to 43. When Jacob wanted sheep to give birth to lambs of a certain color, he put branches of the color he wanted the lambs to be born with in front of the sheep while they drink water or put these branches or put the branches next to them while they mated because he wanted this sheep to look at the branches every time they drank water or mated and the lambs were born with a color similar to that of the branches. This story reveals the power of meditation meditating on something long enough. When you meditate on something long enough, you end up looking like it. Now, when we look at God in his word, in prayer and other godly things, we will be able to manifest the divine nature that's in us. And we will be able to work, operate and live like God in all things. Now then, meditate on the word of God, pray a lot in tongues, confess the word and put it to practice at all times. You will live the life of God when you do that. And there is nothing that can stand in front of the plan of God for your life. You will live in the spiritual dimension or the supernatural dimension, supernatural realm. And you will work and, and you will work and move with ease with God. And you will think and see things like Him. So the key is to meditate in what God says in His Word. So when you meditate, we are already given a divine nature from the time when you are born again. I just explained it in the first track. You are given the divine nature when you are born again. But now, as you meditate on the word of God, that means you read it over and over and over again. You look at the word. You speak it with your mouth. The word moves from your mind to your spirit. And only when it's in your spirit, then, can it produce results for you. As you meditate on the word, the, the divine nature will start to manifest outside. Only then can you function and think like God and talk like Him and get the God kind of results. That's the dimension that God wants you to live in.